Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about carcinoma of the breast. First of all I would like to recap some basic anatomy of the female breast. The breast consists of connective tissue and mammary glands. The mammary glands are essentially modified sweat glands that are structured into ducts and lobules. The lobules are the secretory units of the breast. The lobules join together to form lobes. The lobes are connected with lactiferous ducts, the ones that transport the milk when it is produced towards the nipple. The nipple has several openings for the milk to be drained. Around the nipple is the areola, the red round area found centrally on the breast. You can also see the anatomy of the breast on the poster. Now let's start to talk about breast cancer. In a later section of the video I will talk about, about breast cancer in men, but the main focus will be on breast cancer in women, as it is the most commonly occurring malignancy in women. Statistically speaking, every eighth woman will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. The peak age of diagnosis is between the 6th and the 7th decade of life. Before the age of 35, it is considered to be very rare. Because it is so common, I first want to talk about the measures how a woman can possibly detect breast cancer in her own breast. Once per month, at least, should every woman feel if she finds any changes. Changes in the breast are usually felt for with the tips of the fingers of one hand. The superior lateral aspect of the breast is the most common location for breast cancer, so special emphasis should be paid to that area. Also skin changes as dimples, changes in the nipple and areola area, as well as discharge are alarming signals. You can find an overview over the changes indicating malignancy on the poster as well. After the age of 50, also routine mammographies are recommended for every woman. If a carcinoma of the breast is suspected, the doctor will first do an inspection of the breast to look for any changes as for example the ones I have just explained. Also a palpation of the breast as well as the regional lymph nodes is indicated. Examinations via sonography, MRI or mammography are the next steps in the diagnosis. The final step of the diagnosis is done via a biopsy and histologic examination of the suspected area. This is also helpful for the grading and the amount of expression of progesterone and estrogen receptors and to check for the HER2 or new receptors. Risk factors for the development of breast cancer are not completely understood, however there is research for genetic factors as well as familial and geographic factors. The age is surely the most significant risk factors, as the mean age of diagnosis is in the 60s or 70s. It is thought that only around 5 to 10 percent of breast cancers are due to genetics. In around 50 percent of those where the carcinoma is thought to be of genetic cause, there is a BRCA1 gene mutation of chromosome 17. This gene together with a slightly more rare BRCA2 gene on chromosome 13 is responsible for the DNA repair. If this gene is mutated, it is impossible for DNA damages to be repaired, which can lead to the cancer development and progression. It is thought that around 70% of women with this gene mutation will develop breast cancer until they reach the age of 80 years. Also women who have direct family members 
who had either breast cancer or ovarian cancer are advised to pay close attention to breast cancer prophylaxis as they might be more likely to develop it themselves. If you want to know more about ovarian cancer, make sure to see our video on that as well. Statistics show that in North America and Northern Europe the risk of developing breast cancer is higher than for example in Japan and in Mediterranean countries. However, studies also showed that people who have migrated from areas of low breast cancer incidence to areas of high breast cancer incidence will experience the same cancer risk as in the respective area. So research suggests that diet, environmental and cultural differences might be the culprit of those differences, rather than genetics. But more research has to be done in this field. Other risk factors include postmenopausal estrogen therapy as well as the usage of oral contraceptives. This increase in risk lasts for around 10 years after termination of the hormone usage. This is due to the influence of estrogen on the proliferation of the breast tissue, as well as the higher than physiologic levels of estrogen. Another risk factor is ionizing radiation. Previous radiation therapies in the thorax area can increase the risk of developing breast cancer significantly. Also, the radiation used for mammography increases the risk of developing a carcinoma of the breast. However, the benefit of detecting a possible carcinoma early outweighs the risk increase of the used radiation. Other risk factors include obesity, alcohol consumption, a diet rich in fat, as well as nicotine usage. In the next part I would like to talk about the classification of breast cancer. Histologically, most carcinomas of the breast are adenocarcinomas, which are developing from the epithelium of the distal lobes of the breast. Adenocarcinoma of the breast is further divided into invasive carcinoma and non-invasive carcinoma, which is also called carcinoma in situ. Non-invasive carcinoma of the breast can either affect the ducts or the lobes of the breast. Other carcinomas that can possibly develop are the inflammatory breast carcinoma and sarcoma of the breast. The inflammatory breast carcinoma is characterized by signs of inflammation that can be observed, for example a reddish erythema on the skin. This type makes up around 1-2% to of carcinomas of the breast. In the next part I would like to talk about a breast cancer metastasis. The risk of developing distant metastasis rises with the size of the tumor. Usually the regional lymph nodes in the axilla are the first ones affected. Via the hematogenous route, the most commonly affected organs are the bones, as well as the liver and lungs. For advanced breast cancer, it is also possible to grow regionally into neighboring structures as the pectoral muscle and the skin, which can lead to ulceration of the skin. The therapy of breast carcinoma depends on the stage of the cancer. The primary therapy is usually a surgical removal of the tumor, in many cases also an amputation of the breast is necessary. Usually also the regional lymph nodes are resected. The surgery can be divided into quadrant resection, which is used for tumors less than 2.5 cm in size in which the tumor is removed with a 2 cm margin of healthy tissue. The other surgery is the radical mastectomy, which is used in tumors over 3 cm of size or if the areola or skin is invaded as well. After the surgery it is, depending on the stage, 
necessary to do a chemotherapy, hormone therapy or radiation therapy. A commonly used type of hormone therapy is with a medication called tamoxifen. This is an anti-estrogenic medication. After the therapy, it is necessary to go to frequent checkups. In the first three years, it is recommended to do a checkup every three months. In the fourth and fifth year after therapy, every half a year. And after the sixth year, an annual checkup is recommended to check if there was a relapse of the cancer growth. In the next part, I would like to talk about breast cancer in men. Around 1% of diagnosed breast cancers are in men. The types of cancer are histologically the same as in women, so the invasive ductal carcinoma, where the cancer growth starts in the duct and then invades other areas of the breast. The next type is the invasive lobular carcinoma, where the carcinoma growth starts in the lobule and invades other areas. And the last type, the ductal carcinoma in situ, which starts in the ductal system but has not, or not yet, invaded other areas of the breast. Also, the symptoms are similar to women. A sign for breast cancer in men can be a lump in the area of the chest, redness, irritation, or a dimple formation in the skin, or a whitish or bloody discharge from the nipple. The risk factors for men include obesity, as this increases the estrogen levels, liver disease, as this can lower androgen levels and raise estrogen levels. Another risk factor is if a man has the Klinefelter syndrome, which is a genetic disease. Here men have an additional X chromosome, which can lead to higher estrogen levels and lower androgen levels. Treatment for prostate cancer can include medications that include, include estrogen, which also increases the risk for breast cancer. Other risk factors are previous radiation therapy, a family history of breast cancer, genetic mutations and increasing age. Most breast cancers in men are found after the age of 50. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.